Hello, this is Skyler. This is Robot C for Mindstorms, part four, or episode four. Uh, today, we are going to start programming a line counter. And so this robot, or the program we're making, will control the robot so that it will count lines. And so you can do grid navigation and other stuff, easy to apply. Let's get to the code. So we'll go to File, and New File. And right away, since I don't have my function library and I really like it, I'll save it. Save as. And, um, line fall lower. And then we'll compile the code, F7. And it's like, meh, meh, meh. Yeah, sure, whatever. Task. Oh, you probably, you guys probably can't see that, can you? Um. That should be better. And now we'll compile it. And lots of happy things come up. And um, so much for the function library. Uh, we'll get to right. We'll get right to work. So um, last time we did line follower that used a threshold value. We're done with that. We're not going to use thresholds anymore. That was just like the easy cheesy way of detecting a line. Now what we're going to do is we are going to analyze the current value of the light sensor with, um, in real time, we're going to do this real time, we're going to con compare it to previous values. And so in order for us to do that, I'm going to go over something called an array. And I really like arrays, I use them a lot, especially when I make games, but um, we're not making games right now. So I'm going to do int light values, and then square brackets, that's like the, um, like you've got your curly brackets, if you just don't hold shift, you've got square brackets. And um, 32, e well, I'll keep it simple for now. We'll just say 4 equals curly bracket 0, 0, 0, 0. This line right here, that says, hey computer, NXT, there's going to be this array. It's, gonna, it's going to be an int. It's going to be, the name is going to be called light values, and it's going to have four individual values. And so it's an array of four integers. And set them up like that. Now, if I wanted the default values to be different, I could have like 1, uh, 53, negative 6, or 7, um, and 49. And so, um, I could do that, but since I'm going to change the values anyway, I could just be like that. Now, if I want to reference them, if I want to see what they are or set those values, here's how I could do that. Um, if I did like, um, nxt display string I'll pick a line number 0 and then I'll do modulus D because that is what displays the next thing I give it as a number I could do light values 0 and what that does is light values 0 gets that one right there and it displays this part which is 0 it displays it as text now if I did that, if I did light values 1, it's going to get this next one. It's kind of weird that it starts at 0, but in computer science, 0 is a very special number, and that's just how it works, I mean. <laughs> um, and so, like, if this was 45, and this was 17, and this might be uh, 32, and this is 9, light values 1 would get 17, and so this will print out 17. Like it would, it's like, it's like it did that instead. But that basically says, hey, grab whatever this is, and this says grab that number right there. Okay, cool. Um, I'm not gonna print it out right now because um, this is kind of a long lesson, and I think I might divide it up into parts. But um, all right. So um, if I want to set that value, I could say light values two equals zero. What that means is it's going to get whatever this is, and that's this number right here, because it goes zero, one, two. It changes 32 to zero, like 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 that. When uh, whatever that is right there. Um, and so yeah, that's arrays. And so what I need to do is 
what we're going to do is we're going to gather data over time. And we're going to store those values inside an array. And we're going to use the array. We're going to look at the values of the array over time. And we're going to determine um, if, we're, if the relative change over these values that we make, whether that change is big enough to consider that we've run across the line. Because when you run across the line, the light sensor value, that's what we're going to put in here. We're going to put light sensor values in here. And when we go over a black line, the light values will change dramatically. And so if we can look at the array, if we can analyze the array and determine, oh, well, yeah, there's a big difference in the numbers, then we can say, hey, there's a line. Now, the reason we're not just um, comparing, like, one value um, against another, like, well, what was it the last time? Instead of, what was it 20 times ago? Um, that's because the value of light will change, it will not change all at once. It will be a, it will be, it will, like if you were to graph the change in light, it will be very smooth. It won't be digital like a sawtooth wave, or it won't be digital like a square wave. This is, this will be, rel this will be a gradual change, and if we just look at the previous value, then um, we kind of get messed up because we can't, we'd have to, yeah, it's just complicated. You'll, you'll figure it out. Um, so what we need to do is um, we need to define some functions. And uh, actually, before that, I'm going to change light values to 32. And that is so that we have 32 previous readings. Well, 31 previous readings, and then the the first value, which would be the... That one will be the current light value. And so I'm just going to put lots of zeros here. And so um, one thing to know about... Um, this declaration right here, you can't say that it has, you can't give it like eight numbers right here when you're saying this is going to hold 32 values. Like if I hit F7, it says, uh, code generation should not perform errors during compilation. And this says incorrect number of array initialization elements for light values. It's saying, hey, right here you're saying this is going to hold 32 values, but right here you're saying it only holds eight. What's up? And so, um, I, I know I have eight right there. And eight times thir eight times four is thirty-two. So one, two, three, four, and Meyer goes away. So yeah, thirty-two values. All right, and that's just a number. You can make it twenty, or it really depends. Um, but thirty-two, it works for this program. Um, next thing we need to do is we need to define three functions, or declare and then define three functions. We are going to say we need a function that basically, when we get a new value it puts it in this one and it shoves all the other values down and then the value at the end gets deleted so this is like a first in first out um, so like one value comes in here and let's say let's say this value is like you know these, these are all like values that the light sensor potentially might have and I could keep on going when I put in a new value for this one I might put in 45 and then what happens is this value becomes 56, this value becomes 90, this value becomes 67, this value becomes 1, and this value becomes 0, because that's what 45 had before I put that in front of it. And so it's going to shift everything down. And so the first thing that goes in... Um, did I say first in, first out? Sorry, I meant first in, last out. And so basically you put in data over here, and then it gets shoved to the next one, and the next one, and the next one, all the way down until it gets to the end, and then it gets deleted. You just can't remember it. Too many things. Out one ear, or in one ear, out the other, so to speak. Um, except in one end of the array, out the other end. So, we are going to do void, shift, in, uh, value. And what this thing is right here, this is a function declaration. It's saying, hey computer, there's this function that I'm making, so pay attention. And void, that basically means that the function is not going to return any value. It's not going to give back information. It's just going to do something. Shift in value, that's the name of the function. When we call it, when we say, hey, computer, do that thing that I told you to do, we'll say, hey, computer, shift in value. And then this right here, this is saying that, computer, the function needs to expect to get a value. Basically, this says, hey, um, there's going to be an integer that you can give it, and for the function, inside the function, we'll call it a. Now, I can have, like, uh, int a equals blah, blah, blah. 
I could have it out here, and because this a is will be defined inside the function, then this can work. Like, um, you can have two variables with the same name, and that's because they're not in this thing called scope, and you can read about that online. Um, but I don't have time right now. So, void shift in value. Now, that's the prototype or the declaration saying, hey computer, there's this thing. Down here, we'll define it. And you might notice, like, um, let's pretend this was void main. This is a function definition saying, hey computer, you already know what main is. You already know that there's a function called main and that it's not going to return anything, but here's what's actually part of the function. And there you go. But um, Robot C decided to confuse things in its task main, but in regular C, this is actually void main. And it makes a little bit more sense. But now I'm back to uh, <coughs> shift in value. Shift in value A. What we need to do is um, we're going to set up a temporary array so that we don't lose any information. So I'm just going to copy this whole line and paste it in there. And actually, I'm going to fix all these because um, that, that that's confusing. You're like, why is the... No, they're just zero. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, and then I'll change the name and we'll call this temp values or like temporary values, not temperature, but temporary. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use this thing called a for loop. And I know there's a lot of new information, but just bear with me. You'll, I, I think you'll understand. So there's this loop, and it's called a for loop. And what it does is it has a um, definition, and then has a semicolon, and then it has a condition, and has a semicolon, and then it has an assignment. Or, well, we'll call it an increment. And then it's got curly brackets, just like everything else. And so here's how it works. Um, what this loop is going to do is, it's kind of like a while loop, which has a number in it, but this is kind of built in. Um, the definition would be something like int i equals zero. Basically you're saying, hey, computer, there's this thing, it's called i, and it's called zero. If you had defined i out here, you could get away with doing that. But most people, that kind of defeats the purpose of a for loop. You could do a while loop um, if you wanted to do it the other way, or if you were going to do that way. Okay, so that's i equals zero. Now you want a condition, and the condition is like, you know, it's the, the sky is blue, or friendship is magic, or, you know, other stuff. And so, for the condition, I'm going to say i is less than, um, i is less than 32. And here's what I'm doing. I'm setting up this for loop, and what the for loop does, the for loop, it's going to loop through each element in this array. And the the biggest like temp value, like if I wanted to find out uh, temp value 32 equals 6, that code right there, that's not going to work because temp value 32 is outside the bounds of the array. Like that's what they will say a lot of times. Um, let's see what Robot C says. If I just do like that, and it says eh unreferenced function, that's fine. That's just basically saying, eh, you're having a function, but you're not using it. This says, undefined variable, temp value. Oh, temp values. <laughs> Here we go. Now it says, compile time constant array. Index 32 is outside of the bound, of the array bound. 0 dot dot 31. This is saying is, 32, that number is bigger, like that part of the array, that's bigger than the actual array. But 31, if I put 31, it's fine. And that's because it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, etc. All the way up to 31. Because um, 0 is counted, you don't get to 32. Um, yes. So, back to here. I need this for loop to count all the way up until i is less than 32, which would be 31. Okay. And so, increment. I could do i minus minus, which is basically saying subtract 1 from i. Or I could do... Um, plus plus, or I could do uh, times equals 2, which is multiplying i times 2. I'm just going to do plus plus. And so it's going to go to 0, and then it's going to do whatever is inside here. And then 
it's going to add one to i, and then it's going to do this all over again. So, just just starting back from the basics. Computer gets here, goes to the for loop, says, okay, so there's this, I better keep track of this thing called i, and it's going to start out zero. And uh, is zero less than 32? Um, yeah, that's right. And then it's going to do whatever we put in here, and then it's going to go, and then it's going to add one to i, so now i is one, and then it says, okay, i is one, is, is one less than 32? Yeah, it is. And then it's going to do this again, and then it's going to add another, and then it basically does that until it gets up to 31. 31 is less than 32, it does the code, it adds 1, so it's 32 now, i is 32, is 32 less than 32? No. And then it says, okay, we're done with you, and it just jumps over and we're done with the for loop. Okay, cool. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say temp values i, and I'm using i because i is going to count up from 0 to 31, and so that, that will cover all of these, all of those values, equals I'm going to say light blah, light values i. What I'm doing is I'm saying this element is now equal to this element, and this element is now equal to this element. Like, if this was 56, then when I get to here, this is going to become 56. Coolness? Alright, so that's about right. Next thing, um, now I need to do is shift the, um, we, we've copied light values into a temporary array so that we don't lose any values. Now what we need to do is shift all the values in light values over. So what we're going to do is, the first thing, the first thing we know, in A, that is like my input, like that's the new value that's going to come in. The new value that's going to come in is going to get shoved under there. So if my new value is 56, then that becomes 56, and everything else gets moved over. And so that is what A is. Like that's what we're gonna send it. And so right away we can say light values zero equals A. Next we need another for loop. My goodness. So we got four, and then we have their declaration, and we can have int i equals zero. Now again, the reason we can have this and this, like normally if they weren't in there, then your computer would scream at you and saying you can't do that. What this is doing right here is int i is inside the for loop and once it gets out of the for loop i gets deleted. And so right here there's no i. Right here there's no i. But inside here there is i. Okay so int i equals zero. i is less than 32 because that's the length of our arrays. i plus plus. Inside here we're gonna say uh, light values and actually whoop, I messed up we want to start at 1 because if we start at 0 then we're going to rewrite this and we want to keep that we want to keep this the way it is we want this to start at 1 and so we're gonna say light values 1 or this value is now going to equal this value but we can't use that value from light arrays because we've already erased it and so we're gonna say light values i equals temp values i minus 1. And we can use temp values because temp values didn't change. We're setting when, before we put a into it, this value, we'll just say it's 56, now becomes this value. When we input a to this, let's say a is 8, there we go. And then um, this value needs to have what 8 used to be. What, what was right there, it was 56. And so now, now we're going to reference this, and this is now going to be 56. And I'll reset those values. And so, down here, this works. Alright, so, that was our shift in value function. Um, let's just test that really quick. And I will, will write part of the program here. So, before, uh, quick review, we did while loops, and here's how the while loops work. We got while condition, and basically when this condition is true, like um, when friendship equals equals magic, when when this is like, yep, friendship is equal to magic, then the computer will do code in here, but once friendship doesn't equal magic, 
then it's going to get out of the while loop and it's, it's going to go do this line and then do that line. Coolness? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do while true. And while true, you're like, well, what is, what is that? While true um, is shorthand, like you can do it, and what it means is while well, true is equal equal to, is equal equal to true, and we use double equal signs when we're comparing a value. Like over here, we got a single equal, and that's basically saying, hey, set light values, all of that to all of that. Double equals means, hey, I don't want to set anything, I just want to look at them. And so while true is shorthand for while true equals equals true. But because people didn't want to type that, the people who wrote Robot C and C++ and came up with that standard just decided, hey, you should be able to just do that. And it looks kind of cool. All right, so while true, what I'm going to do is I'm going to display the first eight elements, or the first eight values of light values. And so um, we'll be able to look at them and see that this code works. So. I can take this and put it in here, but um, we actually need a for loop because, um, well, like, here's what it would look like if I didn't use a for loop. Um, if I didn't use a for loop, this is what I'd have to do. Um, make it look right. I'd have to do that, and that, and that, and that. And then I'd have to change all the line numbers. There, one, two, three, four. 5, 6, or 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then I have to change these, and um, that's what I'm going to do with my for loop um, right over here. For int i equals 0, we're going to set the initial to 0, because basically I'm going to use this number, and it's going to replace 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and so we're going to start at 0, because that starts at 0 or int i equals 0. i is less than 8, because 8's, um, when this is 8, it won't, it'll get out of it, but when this is 7, it'll run, because 7 is less than 8, and so that's what we want. i, we just want to add 1. Like, if I wanted to do every other one, then I could do, um, plus, e plus equals 2, and that would add 2 to i, and so I would get 0, and then we could do 2, and we do 4, and we do 6, and then it would do, it would find 8 and it would be like, nope, sorry. We just want plus plus. And then what I'll do is, uh, we'll take that and spacing look better. And we'll say i and i. This right here does that right there. I, the, 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 the choice is obvious. Alright, so this will display the values of our, the first 8 of our array, but we need to, um, we need to do some other stuff. I'm going to get rid of that because it's not helping. Here, we are going to erase the display because if we don't erase the display, then we'll have lots of values on top of each other and that won't look very nice. Uh, next thing, down here, I'm going to actually bring an A because right now we're not doing anything with our array. They're going to stay zeros. We need to put in, put in values. And so we're going to use our shift in value, and then um, if I just did that, what it would do is it would shift in one, so that would become one. Then the next time it did this, it would shift in another one, so they would this one would become right there, and we'd put another one in its place, and so it would just be one one, and then add another one, and then another one, and another. Um, but that would be kind of boring. And so, actually, now let's do that. Um, I'll shift in one, and then we're going to wait because we want our robot to take a break so that we can actually see the readings and I'm just gonna have it wait for a half second before it adds another one and yeah I'm gonna compile code I'm going to turn on the robot I'm going to start UCAM so that we can um, see the robotness and um, see if we can get a better view Um, there we go. Oh, and um, let me just modify the settings a little bit so that, um, there we go. That should be more legible. All right, so, sorry about that. Uh, um, computer, I had to restore it. 
Alright, so we downloaded the program. We'll start back to here. And as you can see, it's shifting in the zeros to ones. I'll uh, restart the program so you can see it a little better. There you go, zero, one, one. And you can see it's shifting in those ones and the zeros are just going away. Now this is the only this is only the first eight. This has thirty-two um, this has thirty-two values. And so we can get we can uh, record a, a bit of data. And we could add more if we wanted, but um, this works. Alright, so instead of shifting in one, let's shift in something a little bit more important. Um, go to robot and motors and sensor setup. And then on sensors, um, go to light active. And the reason I've got a whole bunch of crap is because um, my menu level. Um, and just name it LGT1 or whatever you want to name it. Just be consistent. And so now I said, hey, sensor 1, that's now going to be a light sensor. And so it knows, hey, this is how I should talk to it like a light sensor. And instead of shifting in 1, what I'm going to do is sensor value. Um, <clears throat> what did I put? LG T1. And compile the code. And run the code. And we'll start the program. And here you can see, it's shifting in the values of light at the certain times. So, uh, yeah, I know I've talked for a long time, and it's still not done, but there's a lot of stuff you can learn about for loops and arrays. And so, uh, next time we will be doing more of this and reaching toward the goal of building a robot that, programming the robot that can count lines. So, yeah, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And, um, yeah, have a good day or wherever you're watching or good night or or whatever